Can we have professional munchkin play? <laughs> Let's do this. Billy, are we ready to go, homie? We are ready to go. They actually paused it. So, good guy Aerolink, good guy Denti. Back at game number one. Uno. Let's do this. Game number uno. Good guys. Good boys. People playing. But we getting into it. Ooh, Ooh wow. Very close for his game. Already both players uh, over that on that triple digit life. Mm -hmm. They're living that triple digit life, and it, at this point, either one of them can really kill. Palatina has great confirms uh, straight to kills. But Sheik, of course, that back air is such a strong kill option. Um, it's all about how he wants to confirm into it. Oh, gets the grab, trying to go for the up air. And that's when you're seeing with Arrow, like he's well aware of it, and that's and all the intentions that come behind it. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the issues that Palutena particularly has is landing. And something that Sheik is actually really adept at is juggling horizontally with the needles. So I wouldn't be surprised if Denti just attack on some more percentage, might just throw out like single needle after single needle potentially. But based on the way that Eric is kind of DIing, doesn't seem like it might be as big of a favorite. And nice. Ooh, there's the back throw. There's the stock. There's a lot about that that I really enjoyed. Uh, Paul Tien as a character has a lot of trouble landing. Yeah. And so what Aerolink did in that situation is that he uses the warp, gets right back onto the stage, and uses that nice back throw afterwards to seal that stock on Denti. But Denti answering right back with an up smash, and we're at even stocks, even percents on game number one. And Denti being content, stay, even if he's full screen, he's still gathering needles. It's one of those characters that always can have a threat viable ready to go. And I like the spacing that we're seeing from Denti. He's smart, he knows that those back airs are, are fantastic too. But those tilts in general set up for so many combo opportunities. And there's those uh, fairs that we were talking about earlier. A bit extra knockback, but getting the damage that he needs. Nice, and the Aerolink making use of that long range on that grab. But he doesn't unfortunately get quite the opening he was looking for. Very smart, jumping away so he doesn't get trapped on that platform as it's retreating. Back to neutral. And I, I want to see if, if, if Aerolink can go in here and, and, and start getting some setups off of those jabs. Jab is such a great hit confirm, but he uses that throw and gets caught by the grenade there as he's trying to use the down throw animation. This is the thing about playing a character like Palutena. Nice range, but the problem is a lot of her moves suffer from a bit of end lag. And so Aerolink right now is just poking and plotting very slightly, trying to choose his openings very wisely because Right there, he doesn't want to get caught by the grab. Unfortunately, Denzi's able to get his hands on him, but Aerolink coming back with a nice dash attack. Oh, caught. Great grab. Punishing that forward smash, and there it is off the top. Ooh. Using that up air. Denzi's taking game one. Bit unfortunate for Aerolink. I think he was reading maybe either a roll back towards the edge, right. or just Denzi kind of staying in there or trying to contest with the grab. But mm -hmm. the minute that Denzi was able to get on the other side of Aerolink, uh, once again, that long long recovery at the end of that smash attack is really what cost Aerolink game one. Completely agree with you. Okay, so we're going into game two. Popular picks so far uh, have been between Smashville and Town and City. Um, but with when you're Aerol, what, if we had talked to Aerolink prior to Customs, he would be very content with taking very, lo uh, very long stages because he has super speed, because he has lightweight. He was able to traverse the stage super, super quickly um, and just able to, to generally run amok and be able to be in multiple different positions, which is what's so important, right? It's that ability to be in the right place at the right time with the right moves. I'm taking a second here. Yeah, he's just trying to figure out. Oh, home field advantage? Home field advantage. I oh, like and it. he's going for the music oh, selection. Yeah. No, no, no. He's, he's ready. Everything has to be on point. Yes. Okay. And we're getting into it. Palutena. Sheik. Game number two. I believe this set is three out of five. Uh, I might need to have a double check on that. Okay, here we go. But excellent choices. That's what we're talking about. Using those projectiles in neutral. You can get all those needles ready to go with Sheik. And granted, it's not for three percentage, but it's another threat that your opponent has to consider. It's another one of those uh, options that you have to consider in ramp. All of this so far uh, going forward, though, is going to be three out of five. Yeah, so Erlen has a little bit more time, I guess, to just understand Denti as a player overall. So you're going to be noticing that Erlen is going to be using a lot of fairs and bears in this game. And that's not only because it comes out really quickly, especially uh, when considered to a lot of the ground options that Palutena has. It's also because if you space it correctly, it can be an excellent counter 
to other aerial attacks because of some of the invincibility frames that it possesses. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's one of those trump cards that you can do where you know someone wants to press a button, you can definitely use that to counter them up. Uh, it's one of the because of that invincibility, you can use that to trump other people. But when it comes to the rolling and you seeing all those tendencies, Altin also has an excellent app, so um, oh, yeah. definitely catch those rolls and catch those spot dodges. And there we've seen the auto reticle there. But that's the weakness of it. Whenever you have a character like Sheik that has such fast foot speed, you can move away uh, from from those positions that had been previously locked in. And it helps that the low profile is there as well. Yeah, he's just able to run right underneath those projectiles that Aerolink sent out. And you can see Dentsy already fishing, trying to make the most of the fact that Palatina, like we mentioned before, has a tough time really landing, aside from using that warp. There's that back air that we're talking about, but there's the bouncing fish that's even stronger. One of those kill options that she definitely has on demand, ready to go. And it's not going to really do much, uh, seeing as uh, Aerolink was on the right side of the stage and it sent him towards the left, but now that Denti has a little bit more stage control, maybe we can see a bouncing fish uh, set up, and then that's probably ha going to have a higher chance of KOing. You're absolutely right. Nice yeah. fair. Not going to be quite enough, even with uh, that touch of increased knockback in this latest patch. Oh, there's the board smash, and it's going to take him off the top. Palatin is coming back in here. Zero percent. Needs to see if he can make something happen. And there's a lot of options that he would have at lower percentages against uh, Sheik. Using that jab to set up into more jabs, into, into smashes, into grabs. There's a bunch of different options that you have on it. This is one thing that Aerolink can do pretty consistently, especially if Denti has a lot of aerial approaches coming in with the fair. If he can just pick up the pattern in regards to how Denti's going to be throwing off the fair, he can get a perfect shield and then get a punish right afterwards. Earlier we saw a grab, and from the grab, Palatina has some decent follow-ups that can maybe bring this game back, but I'm afraid it might just be a little too late as Denti is continuing to extend this lead. The gap is definitely increasing very quickly, and Arrow like trying to jump off with that Nair, that signature one that we're used to seeing, whether it's the knockback into the stage for the stage spike, or whether it's just boxing them out and pushing his opponents that much further down. Um, Denti, you're seeing right now, noticing that he can get off using those up -ease. That vanish is a kill move as well as a recovery tool. Nice! Loving that up tilt. And that, I think that lingering hitbox actually might have uh, covered up, uh, the jump option as well as the get up option. That's really powerful. And even, I mean, as a tool on its own, up air, it should be up tilt, is a really strong anti air as well. Oh, oh my goodness. You know, Denti doesn't make it back on stage. He does get a bit of damage. Let's see if it'll be enough for him to close out this set. Using those needles once again. Nice, perfect shield. Getting the grab right after, but unfortunately fa failing to follow up with that up air. Denti's been whiffing quite a bit of those grabs, but. I want to see stronger punishes from Aerolink. He, he's had a good job of building up percentages, but not really having an easy time confirming in the kills here. Multiple fares on shield, and you're seeing Denti not giving up space. He wants to hold this position and continue to drive forward. Ooh, that fair not going to be enough. All right, set of needles. I know there's some interesting confirms you can do with the needles, where you could actually utilize the needles at higher percents to set up for bouncing fish. I saw Mr. R and Evo do that several times. Absolutely. With the knockback that comes with it, you can definitely link in some tighter combos. Aerolink might be on his last limbs here for game number two. Desperately trying to find something. Finds the back throw, but oof, not able to really get much dent. wisely using that bouncing fish to get right back towards the stage. Denti opting for the grenade, but that's where the auto reticle can come in. Especially if you're seeing sheep charging needles that are stuck in, in the same position, that's when auto reticle can definitely come in handy. This is something that I've noticed from Denti. He's going to start off by using a lot of these spheres, jumping up, and then you, he's going to utilize Sheik's really quick dash speed to just come in with a grab after he's conditioned Aerolink to shield so often. Right, it, it, that makes perfect sense, because Zinnering they have to block so much against all these projectile games in neutral, it makes perfect sense to go in for the grab. I wouldn't even be surprised if Denti pops in like a tomahawk. Instead of going for the fair, he just gets a quick grab. But that time he uses the jabs just to get a little bit more coverage because of how fast the fair uh, you have recovery after the fair comes out. And granted, you want to make sure you're using the one, two, not the actual full string of the jab there, as they can uh, DI out of it oh, and yeah. be in an advantageous position. Especially at these high positions. Aerolink catching uh, Densi with that up tilt. A nice lingering hitbox with one, two again. Uh, oh, there's the one, two, and he tries to follow up the grab. Good choices from uh, Aerolink to jump away. Up air, forcing himself back onto the stage. Aerolink is looking for the confirm. Unfortunately, finds a forward smash to the dome, and that's going to take game two to Denti. Very well played by Denti. He's one game away from advancing in this loser's bracket. He is. Aerolink on the verge of elimination here. He's thinking hard, man. 
He's thinking really hard. These guys are also friends outside of, you know, tournaments and competition. They are, I mean, I do stop by the house. I yeah. do see these guys hang out quite a bit. So you're going to see these guys when they play. You'll have these moments where you think, Ah, oh, well, that would have been optimal, but they're already at those next levels of yeah. readability. They understand each other. It, it's, it gets into those friend matchups now, too, you know? Yeah, because you've already... It's it's at, at some points, it's less about playing the matchup and more so about playing the person next to you. Because yeah. they've done this so many times, they understand each other's habits and tendencies. Right. You know, I was curious to see if we were going to be seeing the counterpick of Sheik from Aerolink, but it looks like he's going to be sticking with his waifu as we go into game number three. Denti on set point here. Denti definitely is going to... I think Denti shouldn't change what he was doing. I think it all comes back down to Aerolink to adapt to it, right? Mm. And he's doing a great job of using those forward tilts that combo into those fairs so quickly and easily at lower percentage. Aerolink that time getting the grab, following up with that drop zone there. Tries to get the snap back, but unfortunately is unable to connect as Denti lands that bouncing fish after that grab. And Denti trying to see if he can land these fairs consistently pushed up, pushing Aerolink to the corner. Using the multiple one twos there. Ooh, good, perfect shield. And here's the up air. It's not going to be enough to take uh, Aerolink off the top, but he does get the time to charge the needles, which is just a very important asset. Ooh, I thought that that was going to be enough. Uh, Palutena, of, of course, being among one of the lighter floating characters in the game. Excellent pair that we're seeing from Denzi. He's trying to see if he can box him out here. I mean, he does have Aerolink at these higher percentages. It really is going to take a bouncing fish closer oh. to the edge, but it seems like Aerolink is just going to leave a little bit of charity and just finish up SDing there. Yeah, very unfortunate. Finger flip makes it so he's not able to get that warp out, and Aerolink might be down to the last stock that he plays in this tournament. And this is a scary moment, man, especially for those whenever you're thinking to yourself, this, it all comes down to this. The best thing you can do is focus on playing consistent, playing smart. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of money on this on, on the line as well, even for this match. Yeah. And this is uh, losers. So, yes. You know. No second chances. No, no second, second chances. chances. This is no, it. this is it. Nice. Early taking advantage of that quick jab. Arguably one of uh, Palatina's best grounded options because of how fast it comes out, as well as the range that it has. Yeah, jab itself, though, just super, super good for the confir oh, confirms. That disjoint, man. The disjoints are, are really, really strong. Um, but those dash attacks, even better that we're seeing from Denti. Tries to see if he can bot hold on to stage positioning here. Charging needles, being really economical about his time. Mm. Okay, so Denti on the ledge. That, was, that would have been clever. I think he was trying to jump up, use the needles to just slightly pop up Aerolink, and he would probably follow up with a bouncing fish. But there he's able to seal the set with a decisive two stock. Aerolink eliminated as Denti takes him out with that up air. Friends coming into this match, still friends leaving. Uh, bit bittersweet. Denti takes it over Aerolink. Very good set.